Hello friends, welcome to the creation of Amplify. We're gonna jump right in with our Yupo paper. Today I'm using heavyweight Yupo, and I'm using some Dollar Rowney acrylic inks. Today I'm gonna be using some indigo, which I have mixed with a small amount of 91% isopropyl alcohol, which I explain in one of my other mixed media videos. So I went ahead and put a drop of that with some of my pinata brass metallic, and I'm surrounding it in some 91% isopropyl alcohol. So now what I'm going to be doing is pushing, whoop, bumping it with my head a little bit. Had a high bun that day. <laughs> so I'm gonna be pushing it in and out of that isopropyl alcohol in the direction that I want the fade. I'm starting on the top right side of the paper because then I can let it dry as I move down and don't really have to worry about bumping it with my hand or my elbow or something like that. So I'm pushing that ink up and away from that center point in the bottom left. I'm pretty happy with that, so let's move on. I went ahead and put another drop of that Dollar Rowney acrylic ink, and I believe I used indigo, at least at this point. I added a little bit more of that pinata brass metallic, and again, I'm pushing it in and out of the 91% isopropyl alcohol to get that beautiful fade. You can already see that beautiful texture starting to form. So at this point, I wanted a little bit more of that blue intensity, so I added some of B99 Agate by Copic, and you can see that I added a lot of richness and intensity in that last fade that I did. So again, I'm doing that whole process again, and at this point, I'd like to talk a little bit about why I dispersed my fades so far apart. And that's because I've noticed through trying these different mixed media techniques, it's good to leave some gaps to fill in with your Copic acrylic inks or whatever brand you like to be able to kind of bridge those gaps and to add some interest. The awesome thing about the acrylic inks is that they leave this really awesome texture and you don't really want to take away from that. So at this point, I'm adding a combination of, I think it's... Crucian blue, if I'm saying that right, and dark green by Dollar Rowney. It creates that really beautiful marine green color. Again, with just a little bit of that 91% isopropyl alcohol. And it pairs really beautifully with this really rich indigo. I'm also taking a paper towel that I've kind of folded into a bit of a corner and dabbed in just a little bit of alcohol. And I'm taking away some of the points where the little bit of the acrylic ink tries to escape from that 91% alcohol and kind of creates a bit of a lightning bolt, which is cool, but in this piece, I didn't really want it there. So you can just use that paper towel and pull some away. Here I'm deciding if I want to fill that gap between those two fades in or not. I decided not to, and instead I'm going to push up a little bit into that upper right hand corner. I like doing this because it allows me, again, those white spaces to fill in with the Copic inks where I can add in some new colors, some new textures, and still leave the really pretty separation effect that the acrylic inks have to offer. I'm pretty happy with how that upper right hand corner is turning out, so I'm going to leave that, let those inks settle a little bit, let the isopropyl alcohol evaporate, and see what we're left with. So now I've decided that I want to pull that left hand fade out a little bit more with that really pretty green color that we made. So I put a little drop there and you can kind of see the placement isn't infringing too much on the existing fade, but it is going to add something new and exciting to that left side. So again, I'm doing the process of pushing and pulling that ink in and out of the isopropyl alcohol. And one thing I will mention here with acrylic inks is if you feel that the inks aren't moving the way that you would like, add more of that alcohol. It most likely just needs a little bit more fluidity to be able to move the direction that you want it. I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out, so let's think for a second about where we wanna go from here. I decided to take a paintbrush and pull a little bit of that indigo that kind of reappeared from adding that alcohol and create a bit of a line there that almost outlines that new fade that we applied. At this point, I'm starting to contemplate where I want our Copics to land. I've decided to put some of the B99 Agate 
in a spot where I'm feeling confident that I want some density, which is almost in the center of that page, just a little bit to the right. You can see that I dabbed it a little bit with one of the fingers from my glove, and I wiped it on the paper towel, and that's because I applied a little bit too much, which is surprising from even just one drop. You want barely a drop there, just a tiny amount. So I'm going to continue to add some new colors here. I have a really beautiful aqua color that I've decided to add. And I'm also still putting some of that pinata brass into the drops. And then again, following it with my technique of adding the isopropyl alcohol and pushing it into that alcohol to get that really lovely fade. When you're creating a piece with a sense of flow and direction, it's a good technique to be able to start to fill in the spots that you feel confident in, even if that's not necessarily filling in the center of your piece. You can see a great example of this here where I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do in the middle of this piece yet, but I did know that I wanted to add a little bit more to the bottom part of the painting. This will help you to have a better sense of the piece as a whole and help you build on the directional flow of it as you continue to add more elements. I'm still adding more of this aqua color. I like the aqua on the outsides of the piece because it's a little bit lighter and it adds a little bit of an additional fading element because it's so light compared to that really pretty indigo color. I'm also going a little heavy on that pinata brass because I know I'm not going to be messing with the outsides of the piece as much as the inside in that center portion. Browsing my phone a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> as the center of the piece so I know that that gold is going to be staying well. So here's where I take a bit of a risk. You can see me hesitating a little bit. I decided to add Copic's Atoll, A-T-O-L-L color. I don't normally use oranges or peach colors but today I decided to give it a go and I think it paid off. This really pretty bright orange color especially paired with the pinata brass adds a really lovely contrast to the indigo color we have from our acrylic inks along with this green color we made. So I'm going to continue to add this along the outside edges of our piece to continue to add a sense of density into the center of the piece from our indigo colors. Now that I'm feeling pretty happy with where I've applied this pretty orange color, I think I'm ready to introduce a new color. I decided to add a little bit more orange, but now at this point, I'm ready to add a little bit of light purple. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think this is grayish violet. Oh, my bad. Nope, it is a neutral gray color. So at this point, I'm deciding where I want a little bit more shading. And this is meant to kind of balance out the points where we have that dark indigo color. So you can see that I added some of that neutral gray at the lower portion of the piece and now I'm deciding where I want it to be in the center and again I will do it a little bit more at the top of the piece. I want there to be a nice balance of shading to again add to that really pretty sense of flow that we have but it also not taking away from the cool texture that we have from adding the acrylic inks into the piece. So here you can see I'm using a little bit more of initially my fade two technique where I'm picking the paper up and kind of swirling the ink around in and out of the alcohol and then I'm kind of blowing it with my breath and trying to help it move in a way that I like. So now I'm adding in some of Copic's Ice Ocean which is another really beautiful pairing with the colors we have already chosen. I decided to add a little bit to that right portion and again pull it down into the lower left hand corner. I'm still doing my same technique where I'm adding that little bit of the pinata brass and then surrounding it with the isopropyl alcohol and then kind of creating a fade that adds to that sense of intensity and depth that we have already created using both acrylic inks and alcohol inks. So you can see there's a bit of a process here when I create mixed media pieces where I start with the acrylic and then I add the alcohol inks and then I'll give a little sneak peek here. Then we're gonna be adding in just straightforward acrylic paint. That's a good process to be able to start to build upon a piece and create something that has a sense of fluidity and isn't necessarily too busy. The 
excellent thing also about using acrylic inks is when you add the Copics over them, often what will happen is they won't really modify the acrylic ink base that you've already set down. So that's kind of why I decide on that, uh, that series of steps to create these pieces. So you can see I'm still adding some more of that ice ocean color, and I think I also am adding in some abyss green. It's a little bit darker than the ice ocean, which is kind of nice to filling in those gaps between our acrylic ink fades. You can also see that I've chosen not to really touch the portions where we had those really pretty acrylic fades. I love that texture, that broken apart feeling, almost like a sponge that happens, and it just really draws the eye to the center of the piece. So I didn't want to touch that at all, so I'm just adding into those little gaps between the fades and in the center of the piece, trying to add to that sense of movement, and you can see I'm starting to kind of create almost a inverted S in this piece I kind of decided on. I'm still adding a little bit more of that aqua here, pulling the piece out a little bit more, which is again a really awesome trick that you can use if you don't really know what's, what you're going to do in the center of the piece. You can pull out a little bit more on the sides and that will hopefully help you make a decision about what you want to do in the middle. Once you're happy with the acrylic inks that you've added, it's time to add a new layer. And that's adding in plain acrylic paint. And I usually do this to add a little bit of movement through adding some teardrop shapes. Sometimes I add a little bit of a line or something. This is really up to you, what you would like to have in your piece. One thing I noticed is in that bottom left corner, it was looking a little bit too light. So I added more of that mixed media acrylic ink with the isopropyl alcohol to give a little bit more depth. I'm adding a little bit more isopropyl alcohol. It's a little bit risky, but it was necessary to give this piece a sense of completion. You can see that it added a lot of movement and depth to that lower corner that I really wanted there. I'm going to add a little bit more of the acrylic ink with the indigo to give it a better sense of continuity with the indigo points that we've added in the piece so far. So don't worry if you feel the need to add in more of your alcohol inks or more of your acrylic inks. It's okay, you can do that. Just do it with caution and keep in mind that adding those little acrylic paint details will help you kind of blend it in with your existing piece. I also like to add some liquid gold. This is a liquid leaf to add a couple of points of really shiny reflective gold that highlights some areas that you may want to really shine off the page. It's a really fun medium to add in to your existing acrylic ink, alcohol ink, and acrylic paint medium. After you've done this and you're happy with your piece, sit back and enjoy that you've created something beautiful.